Hey guys and welcome to Feywood. So today we're going to continue on with the little goblin project. <laughs> if you haven't watched the first video and you want to see how I got to this point, definitely click the link. I'll put it somewhere. <laughs> I'm not sure where. Description or up here somewhere. So check that out first if you're wanting to see how I got my little goblin. I'm not even sure if you can see him. Uh, from here, <laughs> there he is sitting in the backdrop there. We got to the point of uh, sculpting his head, sculpting his hands and putting basically his body together. So now from here I need to make clothes for him and there's some final touches I want to make on him as well and put some hair on him and things like that. And I was going to do it all in one video because I do like to keep these projects uh, as much as I can I like to keep projects into one video unless it's a really really long type of project and it just ended up taking longer than I thought and I didn't want to like I still want to be able to share a lot with you guys and not just have to like speed past everything super super fast let me know if you like that or if you just really want um, if you want the sped past version and you want the end result in one video because I know there's benefits to both because I know that there's that whole like oh, I just want to see how it turned out aspect and then there's you know I actually want to know how you made that so I could maybe make it <laughs> so I don't know uh, let me know now also I just want to say like can you see my earrings I love them so much my husband surprised me. I got these yesterday. He ordered them for me. They're like legitimate Jim Henson labyrinth jewelry. It's licensed jewelry. And unless you're not a fan of the labyrinth, you probably recognize them as the knockers. And I just love it because I can just tell everyone to stop staring at my knockers. <laughs> I saw a t-shirt once with the knockers on the breasts and I still to this day wish I had bought that. I'll have to see if I can find it again because oh my god it was so cute. If, if I find a picture of it I'll pop it up here so I can show you what it looks like. I want this t-shirt. <laughs> I'll also link to these earrings in case anyone is interested in them. They have other jewelry as well like um, necklaces and other things like that and mostly it's in the knockers but I think they had like a book maybe and some, some other things but uh, my favorite thing was the knockers and my husband knew that so yeah he got them for me so I'm so happy. <laughs> so here he is. He's ready for some clothes. Now I don't know I've not made doll clothes. Well, that's a lie. When I was little, I definitely sewed together little clothes and things. Do you remember those little troll dolls? Did anyone have those? <laughs> oh, embarrassing little fact about me is when I was young, I uh, hand sewed little troll doll outfits and dressed them up as all different things and I'd decorate their hair and all this sort of stuff. I had a bunch of different troll dolls. I don't know why I was just obsessed with them at the time. Uh, you'd think I would have seen that troll doll movie because of that too but I honestly haven't so I should, I don't know, is that any good? Has anyone seen that? Anyway, <laughs> getting off topic. So I do need to work out how I'm going to make some clothes for him. I think what I'm going to do, and I've seen it done before, is like wrap him in glad wrap and you put tape around the glad wrap and then you can cut that off strategically basically and then try and sort of flatten it out um, and you might need to sort of cut certain bits and so forth to work out your pattern pieces. I'm going to attempt to do that. I've never done it before so uh, yeah. <laughs> Up front, look, if you're a, a regular subscriber, you know the deal. I always am trying out new things. <laughs> Disclaimer, not an expert. <laughs> Don't know how this is going to turn out. Fingers crossed it goes okay. But if you came here hoping for someone who's like, yes, I know everything about all the things, like that is just wrong channel. <laughs> We are creatively experimenting on this channel always. So if you're into that and some inspiration, continue watching and we'll see what happens. <laughs> what should I name him also, FYI? Like, uh, need a name. Don't know at all what I want to call him. Here's a closer look. What, what do you think he looks like? What's a good goblin name? I don't know. Comment below if you think of anything for his name. We'll have to choose a name for this guy.
How do you like his outfit? <laughs> uh, it kind of just looks like a goblin mummy right now. Now I need to try and cut this off uh, strategically and then cut it into pattern pieces. I don't know how this is going to go. Like I said, I've never done this before. Uh, and I'm pretty sure this is pretty inexact the way that I've done it, but we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully it comes out okay. <laughs> so you need to think about how to flatten out the pieces as well as where you want the seams to be when you're doing this. It does help to have done some sewing before just because then you kind of understand how patterns come together. I don't know that much as you guys probably know I am very much a novice at this but I worked out enough that I could uh, put some pattern pieces together I did have to refine them a little bit as I was drawing them out uh, I needed to make things like the sleeves a bit wider so that they'd fit over the hands and just uh, neaten up some things so sometimes I folded the piece over so I could do a mirror image just to neaten up the pattern piece. It was a very basic pattern. I just did things like sewed the leg seams together before uh, sewing it into the pants section. I did the pants with a front section, a back section and a bottom section. I kept trying them on as well just to make sure it was fitting. Now there was definitely some hand sewing required because it is small so uh, I did try some tacking stitches and try to sew certain parts. Sometimes I just had to resort to some hand stitching. Whenever I did some hand stitching though I wanted, to, wanted the stitches to look really hand done so I chose specifically contrasting threads. And I put some elastic in his pants as well, so I just used a little safety pin to pull it through the seam. Uh, I created a really basic channel seam for the elastic to go. And then just a couple of hand stitches to stitch it together. Now the top was also basic as well, I had a front, a back and then I had the arm uh, seams which I used the same pattern pieces for both arms and uh, just mirrored them. Now I really wanted to kind of globalify his outfit a little bit so to do that I wanted to put some patches on and I had these uh, nice like fabrics that were contrasting but not too contrasting. I still wanted to keep the same kind of tonal palette and I just cut a couple of squares, stitched them on with really obvious stitches with a really contrasting uh, thread because I want it really obvious that it's hand stitched. Well guys it's a week later and I'm working on this guy again. I'm pretty happy with how the clothes have turned out. You know I did cover him in the tape and the glad wrap and all of that and that really helped me get some pattern pieces and create some things that you know kind of fit him <laughs> and I say kind of fit him because uh, I did have to sort of rethink the top because his head's so big he wouldn't like his head's not going to fit through the head hole uh, unless I made the neck just ridiculously large and that wouldn't look good either so uh, I did cut the back and you know, I could have cut the front, I guess, and made buttons or something like that, but I just decided I didn't want that. Uh, and I don't know that I want to mess around with putting buttonholes in because that's a pain in the butt. Uh, <laughs> it's not too bad. I do have like a presser foot that I can use for it, but I don't know. I just didn't really want to do that. I've got some press studs and I'm thinking I'm going to use those. And look, if I was trying to be absolute perfectionist about it, I could definitely like redo the pattern and like redo the the shirt from scratch and make this longer but I'm not gonna do that <laughs> and plus he's a goblin my <laughs> I'm just gonna explain it away with like all of their clothes are a little bit kind of hodgepodge and a little bit you know scrappy and stuff like that 
Uh, plus it's at the back, so I don't know. I don't have the time or the inkling to remake it all from scratch, but I am going to make just a strip that I can sew into the back that I can put the studs on. So I don't know, I almost feel like it's, you know, like a modesty panel <laughs> that you have in dresses. Uh, if anyone has like made dresses or whatever, um, you might know what I'm talking about, the modesty panels that you put in to like cover like say uh, lace up things and stuff like that or um, in wedding dresses they have that like little panel. It'll be a little bit like that I guess. <laughs> so yeah I'm just gonna do that. I do think I want to make some leather bits for him as well. I've got some leather scraps that um, I've had forever and you know I want to use them for something and I figured it would be a perfect project so you know maybe just a couple of like I don't know, accessory type things, like maybe armor type things potentially. I haven't really taught myself leather working or anything yet. I say yet because I really do want to. So it's going to be really basic stuff that I can throw together uh, because I don't have any leather working tools at the moment or anything like that. So it's more so just going to be maybe using some glue and maybe some strategic sort of pieces of leather. So, uh, <laughs> I'll do the best I can. I don't know how it's going to come out. Uh, but yeah, don't expect anything like amazing at this point in time. Uh, hopefully in the future. Same thing for the shoes. I want to make those out of leather. And the pants did end up a little short. Again, could redo them. Don't have time slash inclination to redo everything. So I decided, you know, that's just how he's going to be. I am going to obviously cover up all this foam. And I was like... Looking at some different pictures of what uh, different goblins wear and it almost does just look like scraps of material that have been um, like, I don't know, tied onto their bodies a lot of the time. So it's not even like, I feel like he's actually quite well dressed for a goblin because <laughs> his clothes quite like look quite like clothes. So I'm going to have to really kind of dirty him up, I think, and like really add some, I don't know, random stuff to kind of goblinify him a little bit more. So yeah, that's where we're at so far. Still a lot to go and yeah, we better get into it. Now, I did end up deciding to do eyelets after all my uh, press stud talk. I just figured because I'm putting a modesty panel in anyway and the design really warranted some eyelets, like it was the same sort of design you would do if you were doing eyelets, I thought, you know what, I've got them, let's do it. Even though it was going on the back and even though I knew I was putting a tunic over the top of it, meh, I went for it. And I have some leather scraps, so I decided to cut some strips from these leather scraps so that I could wrap them around the ankles and the wrists, sort of to cover up some of the foam that wasn't really being covered up by the pants and like the top, you know, just in case you see a little bit peeking out. And also just to mirror some of those images I saw of goblins that had a lot of you know, wrapped material around them and that was a lot of their clothing. Mine's a little bit more subtle, but it works. And again, I just used a brown ribbon, wanting to keep the same kind of colours, and I had this ribbon laying around, so I thought it was perfect to tie up his little tunic top. Now I wanted to make a vest to go over the top but I didn't want the vest to cover up everything that I'd just done with the shirt so I cut the pattern a little bit smaller. I ended up uh, cutting larger armholes as well so that there was just a bit more of the green underneath showing and I had to try it on to make sure it fit before I went to all the trouble of doing all the details. Basically I just made sure I hemmed everything on it so it looked nice and neat. And it wasn't going to fit over his head so I had to leave the um, arms at the shoulders undone so I could hand stitch them afterwards once it was on him. And then cut out a few bits for shoes. Ooh. 
Okay, I've been working on this for a little bit and I didn't film a lot of it to be honest but there was a fair bit of like hand sewing involved. So I, I made some little shoes for my guy. They do sort of angle down a fair bit and that is very much because I based this pattern on the shape of the feet themselves. Like I wrapped them in the glide wrap and put the tape on and all that sort of thing. And that was the shape that came out of it because I had the feet sort of pointed forward. And so, yeah, I, I nearly redid them because I thought, oh, maybe I should make them so that the foot is more, you know, straight. But I don't think it matters too much. Like, once I put the shoes on, I actually liked it. Um, but that was sort of the pattern pieces, although I did end up deciding I wanted the shoe to be taller. So I just drew that a little higher. Um, and then that's the bottom of the shoe. That's the basis of the shoe and that's what came from it. So I did like a blanket stitch down the bottom with a thick thread because I want them to really look like handmade, like kind of ratty, you know, like a goblin would have, you know, patched together and all of that sort of thing. And I put a little bit of, I don't know, trim, I guess, at the top just to sort of finish it off. And then I just used my little hole punch thing that I have to punch little holes which will be where his laces are which I haven't decided what I'm using for the laces but I do have some different thread and stuff so it might just be using something like that. I don't know if you guys can hear this but I can hear the kittens out the door like they obviously really want to come in so <laughs> if you hear a little meowing and possibly scratching uh, that'll be them. Now what I did also notice when I tried the shoes on my little guy was there was some foam showing like in this part here. Um, I realized after the fact that I really should have a tongue in there. So I have cut a couple of pieces, I'm trying to decide how I'm going to attach them at this point to the shoe. I don't really want to have stitch marks, I don't think. So I might just glue them in there, I think, and hopefully that will suffice. So I'm, yeah, gonna just finish off these shoes and put them on my little dude. And then I think I might I might make him a hat. I'm trying to decide. I, I kind of like the idea idea of a little like skull cap situation, and I definitely want to put some hair on him and things like that. So there's still a little bit to go. This has been taking me. I feel like I say this all the time, but this is taking me longer than I expected. Uh, so I better get back to it and see if I can finish these last little bits. Loki. Oh, are you so sad? <laughs> Who is this little one? Is that Loki? You really want to look around in here, don't you? I just heard the most forlorn meows out there. He was just so sad that I didn't let him in. <laughs> look at all this. What is all this stuff? Huh? What is all this stuff? There is way too much for you to get into trouble with in here. Way, way, way too much. So I did decide to glue in the tongues and that seemed to work pretty well. I'm new to this glue but it's pretty handy to have a leather glue. And then I'm just using this rat tail. I think it has other names, but it just seemed like a perfect kind of shoelace. And I just put a bit of PVA on the end so that it uh, held together and went through the holes easy. And I really wanted to dye those laces a bit more. So I just got some spray fabric dye and I sprayed him everywhere really just to tone down some of those colors make them less pop poppy <laughs> I just wanted them to be more grungy and more gobliny now for the actual uh, skull cap that I wanted to make I did use a pattern I found this dolls pattern that was a bonnet and I just uh, changed the pattern pieces a little bit to fit my guy luckily the size was pretty right and then I just cut some ear holes for him um, and you know used leather and so forth to make a little skull cap So 
for the hair I'm using wool tops. Uh, I thought that would be a really good way to make some hair for him so I found some grey, different grey versions of wool tops that I could use so that I could make it a bit more realistic by not having it all the same tone. I wanted some crazy eyebrows on this guy so you can see I'm putting some very long bushy eyebrows on him. And I'm just using this uh, like craft tacky glue to stick the hair down. It's better to start from the bottom I found so I started working lower down first and then started uh, moving up higher towards the top of the head. I did leave a little bold patch in the end but I just wanted to mainly cover his wobbly head. <laughs> And a little bit of a beard and a little bit of a moustache. And here's the finished product guys. I am so excited about this project. I think it's one of the best I've ever made. My husband agrees. He loves this. He thinks honestly it's one of my better projects that I've made on the channel. Now I don't want to alarm you guys, but he does seem to have a life of his own. I found this guy in some unusual places in my studio and I didn't put him there. So not sure what's going on there. If you enjoyed this project, make sure you hit subscribe and for the rest of you, I'll see you next time in Feywood. Bye guys.